Whenever there's a sale, have you ever noticed Euro Truck Simulator 2 is always one of the most played and purchased games in the Steam charts? And I can't help but think, really? Driving trucks sensibly, really? If you look a little closer, this game is very highly rated too. So why is everyone falling in love with a game about driving a truck? So I've decided to answer the question, Euro Truck Simulator 2, worth it? Let's get trucking. If you've not seen my videos before, I like to help gamers decide if older games are worth their time and money. I'm not a veteran who's played thousands of hours just trying to convince you to buy a game I love. I've played around 15 hours so I can show you what you actually do in the game, how steep is the learning curve, and does the progression make you want to come back? Or will this be another game you pick up for a few weeks, then forget? We'll finish off by breaking down how interested different types of gamers might be, and I'll recommend whether you should pay full price or wait for the next sale. Let's cut to the chase with a 25 second summary of what you actually do for the majority of the game before going into more detail. You choose from a list of jobs that each have a start point, end point, the price and the cargo you'll be carrying. You follow your trusty sat nav to pick up and then deliver the cargo undamaged within the time limit and get paid. Failure to follow the rules of the road will result in fines that erode your profit margin and the occasional closure will divert you from the main roads to a more challenging but often more beautiful detour. Each time you arrive at your destination you can demonstrate your parking prowess by reversing your trailer exactly where it needs to be for some extra XP, which can be an absolute mind f that is the real essence of the game, for the first few hours at least, before moving on to trucking world domination, but more on that later. If you're still interested, let's take a closer look at progression and how this game attempts to hook you in and keep you coming back. You might have guessed this game is based in Europe, clues in the name, and as such you have a whole continent of cities, freeways and secret backroads to discover. After choosing your first base of operations, you discover cities by driving to them on a job. Then you can select jobs from that city, slowly expanding your access to the map over time, a bit like Skyrim. Sort of. With each delivery you gain experience, which gives you experience points to spend unlocking more specialised and lucrative jobs, such as oversized trailers or explosives. At first your truck and trailer are provided to you from job to job, but once you've saved up enough money or taken a loan from the bank, you can buy your own truck, giving you access to higher paying jobs, but it's up to you to pay for the fuel and maintenance of your truck and trailer. Eventually you can buy multiple trucks and trailers and employ others to drive them for you, while you count the profits and expand your trucking empire across the continent. You mean I can employ people to use my equipment? to fulfill my customers needs while I charge a markup on every journey so I can pay off the money that I borrowed to buy the equipment in the first place. Why yes, yes you can. Welcome to capitalism. So in summary you drive trucks to make money, then you buy your own truck and trailer to make even more money, then buy more trucks so other people can make you even more money, but the number of people you can employ is limited by the number of garages you own, so you spend even more money buying and expanding garages to employ more people and you get the idea. Borrowing money from the bank can speed up the process, but you have to ensure you can pay back your loans. Personally I'm not a huge fan of trucks, I'm more of a tanks or battleships kind of guy, but when the game started bringing finance and balancing a budget into the equation, it really started to draw me in. Clearly money is the primary tool the game uses to control your progression, but you can also increase your level by completing jobs and doing them particularly well for extra points. Early on in the game going up a level unlocks basic features, helping you learn the game mechanics one by one. In the mid game XP is more about unlocking better trucks and specific types of trailers that enable you to take on a wider variety of jobs from construction machinery to a shit ton of watermelons. In the long run, going up a level will unlock certain parts for your trucks and trailers, or some crazy cosmetics to pimp your ride. 
Combining money and levelling up via XP, the game does well to introduce you to the concepts and mechanics slowly. The pace of learning in the early game felt right, but it's really the money-making side of things tempting me back to the game, rather than the cosmetics. But if you're in any way interested in trucks, trust me, you're going to be in heaven. Building a trucking empire takes time, and it gives you a reason to go on some of those longer, slightly boring journeys because you're looking at the bigger picture. Your employees improve over time, so it takes a while for them and the garages they're assigned to to reach maximum efficiency, and you can even decide which skills they should improve at first, so there's a small amount of people management involved, but really not much. Discovering a new city is another good reason to take on a particular job, as expanding the number of cities you discover also expands the amount of jobs on offer to you. Just make sure you don't waste all your hard-earned cash by speeding and crashing into other people, as that gets expensive real quick. You also need to remember to refuel, get some sleep when you get tired, and repair your truck if you damage it. It sounds like a faff, but it's all really quite straightforward, and just makes the game that much more realistic and interesting. Actually driving a truck is relatively straightforward. You go forwards, backwards, steer left and steer right. You might struggle to go around a corner properly, or break in time before hitting someone up the backside, but otherwise you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. I've used mouse and keyboard for my driving, but if you're real serious, you can get yourself some badass trucking setups. The first real challenge you'll encounter when you reach your first destination is parking. I'm still getting the hang of it now, and there's absolutely no chance I'll ever be able to park the double trailers. But fortunately the game gives you the option to automatically park the trailer, so you don't have to. It's just you'll have to get a bit less XP for taking the easy way out. It even gives you a third option to park the trailer yourself, but in an easy parking spot, and you can change your mind at any time, leaving you fully in control of how difficult the game is. Then finally we have gear shifting. Now I'm happy to say I've not even attempted to manually shift the gears while driving, as it sounds like an absolute nightmare. Call me lazy, but I just put her into automatic and let the game do the work. But this is another example of how in control the player is. If you want more of a challenge, you can put the truck into manual and take on the extreme parking at the end of the job. Or if you don't have the time, just stick to auto and choose the easy park at the end. This is a really important point, as I'm starting to understand why this game is so popular. It's a great example of easy to learn, but difficult to master. It's easy to pick up the game and just drive, but if you want the challenge, it is most definitely there. And the best part is you're fully in control the whole time. This flexibility has to be one of the reasons this game is still so popular, even nearly a decade after its original release. Even when you've mastered the game, you can spend a ton of time and money just modifying the shit out of a brand new truck, until it's turned into a bright pink monster. Then make sure you have the trailer to match. If you're thinking of playing this game because you like the idea of exploring Europe, whether it be the countryside or the many cities of Europe, then I should explain that the map and the world itself is really an approximation of the truth. The roads and the cities are there, but not 100% accurate reflections of the real world. The countryside does change as you drive, but is on the whole pretty generic. The cities and built-up areas look okay, and you'll see some landmarks in there, but again, don't think that this is an accurate depiction of Paris or London. However, the roads themselves, and in particular the road signs, are more accurate. A French road looks like a French road, and a UK road looks like a UK road, but ultimately you'll be able to drive from one end of a country to the other in 10 or 15 minutes. Don't get me wrong, driving from one end of the continent to the other would take a long time. But this is another example of how in control the player is. You decide which journeys you take, and how long they are. The cars that drive alongside you are real cars. They can be annoying little fuckers at times, but you'll recognise which car they're meant to be, and the trucks themselves are 100% accurate, as far as I can tell. This is a trucking simulator after all. When a game is almost entirely about cruising, a good soundtrack is essential. 
The game menu has a little funky soundtrack, which isn't good or bad. It just does the job in the background, but where the music truly shines is the huge list of radio stations you can choose from. I've never really listened to country music before, but for no reason at all, I've spent most of my time listening to this country station to get me through those long drives. Up is the highways, I'm gonna ride it all night long. I don't know much about country music, but from what I can tell, it's usually a story about a guy who's had too much to drink and doesn't want her to marry some other guy. But I digress. The game does well to break up long journeys by creating traffic accidents, forcing you to take a diversion, or just giving you something else to do. But some journeys are long and boring. You can't avoid it. Which is why it's so important the music picks up the slack to get you to the other side, and it does a really great job of making the journey feel shorter. And there really is a radio station for everyone, both genre and language. Even the sound effects are pretty awesome. The amount you can adjust the various noises from your truck is insane. And even the little ticking noises the indicator makes can be surprisingly immersive. I know what you're thinking, and the answer is yes. You can equip a million giant horns to your truck and deafen anyone who gets in your way. This game has an absolute ton of downloadable content. So if you do get hooked, you'll have plenty of extra content to purchase if you so wish. Even better, it's almost constantly on sale too. A lot of the DLC is purely cosmetic, but there are larger DLCs that expand certain areas of the map to include more cities and more accurate roads for certain regions. You don't get many games with this much DLC and for such a good price, particularly in the frequent sales. So. The Euro Truck Simulator 2 DLC gets a big thumbs up from me. Similar to the DLC, this game has a heck of a lot of mods, which makes sense given the age of the game. I went onto the Steam Workshop to try a few of the more popular mods out. I was disappointed to find that some hadn't been updated to work with the latest version of the game, but it's safe to assume that's a temporary issue while they get updated to the latest version. As you can see, one of the mods has allowed me to carry my Star Wars family with me on my trucking adventures, which is an interesting mixture of fun and absolutely terrifying. This is one of the healthiest mod scenes around, and there is something for everybody which can only extend the life of the game if you decide to purchase. A quick note on multiplayer, you can now complete jobs with your friends by going for a convoy. I don't think there's much more to it than that. If you get a bunch of people together, I'm sure that's a lot of fun. But I assume most players are playing it in their own time, so let's move on. Before moving on to the final summary and recommendations, let's review the longevity of this game, as that will be a huge factor in determining whether Euro Truck Simulator 2 is worth your time and money. Having played 15 or so hours already, Will I be playing this game in 6 or 12 months' time? Please bear in mind that for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of trucks or simulation games. If I was, this video would have been a lot shorter. But having started this journey as a sceptic, I can understand why players are so enthralled with this game and keep coming back years after they've purchased. Right now, I'm buying more cheap trucks and employing more drivers to pay off my loans and hopefully expand my garages across the continent. The game is so incredibly accessible and flexible that I can have a 20-minute session or a 3-hour session if that's what I have time for. Compare that to a game such as Sea of Thieves where you must work hard and cash in all of your loot without dying or you risk wasting a session with nothing to show for it. I find games like that stressful, whereas trucking along the M25 to deliver some tomatoes can be surprisingly relaxing after a long day's work. For me, this game is so easy to pick up and put down, I think that's exactly what I'll do. With so many amazing games being released, I will likely be distracted and tempted by other games by the time I've hit the 50 hour mark in this game. But something tells me I will always be pulled back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. 
whether that's for a brief drive from Paris to Berlin or a whole evening investing in new trucks and employing more drivers. The point is that with so many games, you need a good hour just to remember how to play it. But I predict I'll be able to jump right back into my truck and pick up where I left off. So yes, I probably will be playing this game in 12 months' time, but more than likely in between other games that have stolen the spotlight. That's enough of me going off on a tangent. Let's bring all of this together and answer the question. Euro Truck Simulator 2. Worth it? Having played 15 hours, let me break down which kind of gamer I think will enjoy this game, and whether they should pay full price or wait for the next sale. Let's get the obvious out of the way. If you're into trucks and enjoy simulation games, you'll love it. Just go and buy it at full price, I'm sure it'll be more than worth it for you, and you'll more than likely want a lot of the DLC content too. But what about gamers who haven't really played a simulation game before, but are tempted by Euro Truck Simulator 2? Which is where I was before playing the game. If you're into making money, you'll enjoy this game. That's the main appeal for me, and it's got just about enough money-based progression to keep me coming back, at least for now. The idea of building a Europe-wide trucking empire is certainly the main appeal, with the driving itself taking a back seat. But with that said, I do genuinely find the driving element of the game surprisingly relaxing after a hard day's work. Once you get the hang of controlling these huge metal monsters, and get to a point where you can overtake smoothly, rather than constantly panicking, you can just sit back and enjoy the ride with the soundtrack of your choice. The game just makes it so easy for you to decide what kind of session you'll have that it's difficult to find a reason not to play it. If you're a casual gamer, perhaps one that gets bored easily, this is an easy game to pick up and put down, which is great if you already have a busy, stressful schedule in your life. But for those of you that enjoy stressful situations, you can get up to the eyeballs in debt and take a high-paying job delivering explosives, finding you've only got 60 seconds to reach the drop-off point, and wondering if you can take that corner at 60 miles an hour without blowing your load. All while driving a hot pink flaming beast with gigantic horns blaring Le Cucaracha. I would go as far as saying that every single gamer should have this game somewhere in their library. Just wait for it to be on a 75% or more sale and pick it up when you have some spare change. If you're having one of those moments when you simply don't know which game to play, or you're waiting for one to come out, I can guarantee having Euro Truck Simulator 2 in your library will be one of the best gaming purchases you've ever made. It's a great gap filler that can keep you going until something else comes along, or you never know, it might just hook you in. So why is this game so popular years down the line? Simple formula, the learning curve is just right and flexible. You control the difficulty with parking your trailer and gear shifting. A length of playtime to suit everyone. You've only got 30 minutes to drive in Sweden or all night for an epic session across Europe to expand your trucking empire. This flexibility combined with the easy to learn but difficult to master nature of the game makes it incredibly accessible. When you add in the addictive progression formula, I'm starting to see why a game about driving trucks is so popular. If you love trucks and enjoy simulation games, you won't be disappointed paying full price. Everyone else should wait for the next sale, which is never far away. I really can't think of anyone that would actively dislike this game, as it's just so inoffensive. Though I'm sure there's someone out there that would hate it. They'd be in the minority and probably need a hug. I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, feel free to check out the rest of my Worth It series to see if you can pick up a bargain in the next sale. If you want me to cover a particular game, let me know in the comments below. See ya.